Chapter Twenty One of Claude Lightfoot, or How the Problem Was Solved, by Father Francis Finn. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Twenty One, in which Claude tells a story. Say, Frank, I want to go to confession. Claude, standing beside a hammock at ten of the night, was tugging at Frank Elmwood's arm. Within the tent, it was very dark so we must conclude that it was from mere force of habit that frank reached out a hand for his spectacles and fixed them upon his modest nose before addressing the disturber of his dreams who's that it's me it's i it's claude and i want to go to confession i'm not a priest claude i know it but i want to go to father barry right off father barry went to bed a few minutes after telling us that story and besides he doesn't belong to this diocese so i doubt whether he has faculties what do you want to go to confession for anyhow you went to father maynard just before we left milwaukee and last saturday you made your confession to the priest in charge of the seminarians at vesper island once every two weeks ought to be often enough for a boy that hasn't made his first communion yes frank but i've been awful bad i spoiled the fishing on those chicago boys and i hit willie hardy all my might on the muscle so that he cried a canful of tears and i was uncharitable because i said hold on i'm not a priest i tell you and i don't want your confession well may i go over to the island and see the priest there at this hour of the night yes frank i did something yesterday and now i don't know whether it was wrong or not could claude have seen frank's face as he made this declaration he would have seen a face made up largely of astonishment frank had thought that claude was a simple scapegrace who devoting his early years to action had no time for thought or reflection now he learned for the first time that the scapegrace had a conscience both tender and scrupulous frank thought for a moment claude he said at last your mamma told you to obey me yes frank well now i'm going to give you a command to-morrow after breakfast i'm going to the village to buy some necessaries you may come along and go to confession there to father munch who is a nice good old man now i order you to go to bed all right frank but don't you think i ought to make an act of con go to bed repeated frank and don't think about confession till to-morrow three minutes later frank arose from his hammock drew aside a fold of the tent curtain so as to admit the moonlight and advancing to claude's side gazed down upon the little face that lay bathed in the pallid splendor of the moon claude was sleeping so gently and with an expression so sweet and restful upon his features that he seemed in frank's eyes to typify the peace of god the picture of tarsicius which claude had brought along with him and so fastened over his hammock that his eyes could dwell on it after retiring till frank blew out the candle was now clasped close to the sleeping child's breast frank gazed at the pure sweet face for some time and then by an involuntary movement his hand went to his head to remove in very reverence the hat that was not there frank grinned as he caught himself in this action and turned away well i went bareheaded morally before that little chap anyhow he said as he threw himself in his hammock what a beautiful soul the little scalawag must have and i wonder why he pays such attention to that picture of tarsicius then frank fell asleep too they had a pleasant drive together the next morning claude was unusually quiet as in the light buggy which frank had borrowed for the occasion they passed by meadows sparkling with dew upon the clover fields of corn and vast stretches of golden wheat claude's restfulness could be partly explained by the fact that he was preparing for confession partly i am bound to add by the fact that he indulged in a very prolonged lunch of bread and jam and such a number of apples and peaches 
as would have rendered an ordinary lad torpid and a grown man excessively ill neither of these discomfits befell claude indeed had not frank exercised his authority the young penitent would have climbed out upon the shafts and indulged his taste in similar athletic unconventionalities i dare say that claude made a very good confession the old village priest a kind german was much taken with claude and frank and before hearing their confessions insisted on their remaining to take dinner with him i don't think frank remarked with studied gravity that you'll care about having us to dinner after you have heard claude's confession that's so said claude very humbly the priest laughed promise me now that you will take dinner with me the promise was given and the good priest whose diet was very frugal indeed secretly ordered his housekeeper to spare neither pains nor expense in preparing a dinner for his young visitors father munch i am sorry to say took no part in this dainty repast the dishes piping hot had been placed on the table and father munch had pronounced grace when the bell rang excuse me said the priest hurrying from the room he returned quickly having changed his cassock for a coat and said quickly an urgent sick call then he was gone father munch said the housekeeper entering the room says that you must not wait for him he may not be back for hours i'm sorry for father munch said frank claude what will you take chicken or beef or both claude had been gazing intently for some moments at the sideboard whereon were placed a most tempting lemon pie and some cream cakes i want pie said claude simply that's for dessert claude i don't want any chicken nor any beef either i want some pie and claude continued to gaze wistfully at the tempting array upon the sideboard is the child sick asked the housekeeper sick exclaimed frank he ought to be but he isn't this morning i brought along lunch for three intending one part for myself and the other two for claude but claude attended to all of it without my help i'm not hungry continued claude still gazing wistfully at the sideboard but i think i could take a little pie then claude in a businesslike way that is with promptness and dispatch disposed of two quarters of the pie and modestly called for cream cakes frank meantime ravenously hungry after his long fast and drive was eating the substantials when claude had devoured four cream cakes an expression of trouble again came upon his face are you sick little boy inquired the housekeeper please ma'am said the youthful destroyer with a blush i think i'd like some meat and a little piece of chicken if you please then frank left the room to return a moment later with an extremely red face in justice to claude it must be said that he contented himself with a somewhat moderate proportion of the more solid foods and thus it came to pass that before frank had fairly begun his dinner his brisk companion had returned thanks and was presently fingering the table in a manner that threatened a general crash frank was confronted with a dilemma to give claude his freedom was not to be thought of there was no knowing what astonishing feats the youngster might not undertake with the borrowed horse the horse was wild so was claude it would be a case of diamond cut diamond on the other hand unless claude's attention were diverted there was momentary danger of some catastrophe claude after confession was wont to be intensely kittenish how to keep claude in order and at the same time take his dinner in peace was the question by the way claude said frank in a burst of inspiration what is your favorite story the story about tarsisius came the prompt reply he was a boy for you he was brave and noble ray summer would have been like him too i think i wish i had ray summer's picture tell me the story of tarsisius said frank as he helped himself to a piece of chicken what piped claude do you mean to say that you don't know all about tarsisius i will if you tell me was the evasive answer 
claude arose put his hands behind his back and fastening his gaze upon vacuity began in this wise a true contrast to the fury and discord without was the scene within the prison peace serenity cheerfulness and joy reigned there and the rough stone walls and vaults re-echoed to the chant of saturday claude meant psalmody in which pancratius was the centre precentor and in which depth called out to depth for the prisoners in the lower dungeon responded to hold on broke in frank who had dropped his knife and fork are you reading out of a book i know it by heart answered claude well suppose you try to tell me the story in your own words all right well you know frank the pagans were very mean and ugly toward the christians over in rome and whenever they got hold of a good man or a holy woman they got out thumbscrews and rackets and boiling oil and behaved awfully they were cruel now once upon a time pancratius he was a good one and some others were in prison and were condemned to die by being devoured by wild beasts the day before they were to die a holy priest wanted to send them holy communion so that they could preserve the sacred hosts overnight and go to communion the very day they were to die but you see frank there was something standing in the way what's that interrupted frank there was something standing in the way repeated claude that is the persecutors had spotted all the deacons and priests in rome so that if any of them were to try to bring communion to the christians in prison they would be taken up so then the holy priest after saying mass was looking around for somebody who wasn't known to the persecutors to carry the holy communion to the prison and while he was looking around a little bit of a boy tarsisius you know stepped right up and said how anxious he was to carry our lord to the prisoners do you know frank i don't think that tarsisius was as old as i am he was a boy just like me frank only he was an orphan he was good at games you know no i don't broke in frank well listen then and i'll prove it the priest was afraid to entrust the holy mysteries to a little chap like tarsisius but when he saw what a plucky fellow tarsisius was he gave in then he wrapped up the divine mysteries in a linen cloth and then put another cover over them and little tarsisius was so happy at the great honor shown him that he just cried and he blushed then the priest told tarsisius to be awful careful in guarding the mysteries and the little chap said i will die rather than betray them claude paused here then added impressively that boy was a true american the youthful narrator was perfectly serious well tarsisius got along nicely till he came to where a crowd of boys were playing some game or another they wanted just one boy to make up their game and when they saw tarsisius they were mighty glad because as one of them said tarsisius was an excellent hand at all sports there now frank that's in the book tarsisius used to play games just like you and me do you think frank they played baseball in those days i believe not returned frank or football not the way we play it well i wish the man who wrote that book had told us what game those boys were going to play anyhow they wanted tarsisius to join them but of course he wouldn't think of such a thing when he was carrying our lord wrapped up in the bosom of his tunic he kept his hands pressed to his bosom and one of the boys noticed it then the crowd wanted to see what he had but the plucky little chap held on so tight that they couldn't do anything with him they cuffed him and kicked him and pulled him about but tarsisius stood it without ever unfolding his arms i wish i'd been there what would you have done i'd have taken his side claude's eyes sparkled 
he doubled his fists and brought one of them down on the table with such strength that the dishes danced uh, you'd better go on with your story suggested frank well of course a big crowd began to gather at once did you ever notice frank when you get into a fight how quick a crowd gathers i don't get into fights young man oh anyhow there was a big crowd in less than no time and one villain of a fellow said what is it why only a christian ass bearing the mysteries then the whole crowd fell on that brave little fellow and they were stamping on him and beating him when brave old quadratus came up and scattered them right and left but he was a little too late that little boy was nearly dead all the same he hadn't let go of the sacred mysteries for a single second and so when quadratus who was a christian officer picked up that little bit of a boy he held in his arms a martyr and the king of martyrs claude's face as he spoke glowed with enthusiasm he must have felt happy frank to hold two such things you see tarsicius had just strength enough to tell him that he was carrying the sacred mysteries in his tunic and i'll bet you anything that that big strong officer trembled all over when he took the blessed sacrament from the boy's bosom little tarsicius didn't die at once frank he opened his eyes a few minutes later to look upon a pagan lady who had been kind to him and then expired that one look converted her you see frank he was a saint but do you know frank that that brave old quadratus made a mistake i think what was his mistake why when he saw that tarsicius was dying he should have uncovered the blessed sacrament and given him communion he wasn't a priest said frank but the boy was dying and there was no priest around retorted claude in those days of persecution the priests couldn't always be around and so the people were sometimes allowed to take holy communion themselves but perhaps resumed frank quadratus might have thought that tarsicius was too young too young bawled claude if the boy had sense enough to defend the holy eucharist with his life i reckon he had sense enough to receive holy communion too if i was in the place of tarsicius i'd have asked quadratus to give me communion if i was able to do it but he didn't need communion said frank a martyr goes straight to heaven anyhow you're a pretty catholic frank elmwood said claude disdainfully every time you go to communion you get more grace you know and the more grace you've got the more you'll be able to love our lord when you get to heaven you're right claude but quadratus acted for the best after all if a thing like that were to happen in these times it might be proper for even a layman to give communion but in those days the holy mysteries were at all odds to be kept concealed from the pagans had quadratus undertaken to give tarsicius communion he might have exposed the blessed sacrament to the eyes of those who should not according to the laws of the church see it and who once they had seen it would have treated it with insult and sacrilegious irreverence that's so assented claude i didn't see it that way before but now you've made it as clear as daylight you're not as stupid as you look frank was pleased to observe you'll be a great theologian some day you needn't poke fun retorted claude tarsicius was great i wish i wish here claude feeling that he had said too much bounded out of the door and before frank had quite finished his hearty meal the youthful admirer of tarsicius had succeeded in bringing about a very respectable dog-fight directly in front of the rectory End of chapter twenty one